The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome back into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green is alongside, and it's time to talk about the Miami Dolphins seven round mock draft post the Senior Bowl. Miami. You got a new head coach in town, Mike McDaniel. Let's see what uh, see what they can put together here. Um, started out with the number twenty nine overall pick. You got him taking Bernard Raymond out of Austria. He's an offensive tackle from Central Michigan. Big old boy, six foot seven. I'm sure a lot of Dolphin fans will go, "Holy shit, we're taking another offensive lineman." You are, but you got to understand with Mike McDaniel taking over, you've got to have you got to have something to tie all this all together. And to me, the way to do this is to have Bernard Raymond play on the left side. Eichenberg move over to the right. Take get Jesse Davis the hell out of the starting lineup. If you want to play him at center, however you do it, I don't really give a shit. Uh, you you got plenty of linemen that I think are very talented. The one thing you don't have is that big bully left tackle. Liam Eichenberg had a fine rookie season. I still think he's better on the right side in this in this offense that Mike McDaniel is going to bring. I think that's going to get put under a microscope. The good thing about Bernard Raymond, he showed it at the Senior Bowl. He does everything well. He had, there, there was a time where he just got killed by speed rushers, had a great week at the Senior Bowl, kind of took some of my fear of that away. I now see him as a no-doubt first-round prospect, and I wouldn't be shocked if he actually went higher than this. The Dolphins should be really pleased if he falls to them there with their first first-round pick, or with, the, with their first-round pick. In the second round, you got to take it a running back, which everybody knows they absolutely need a running back. Can't do this Miles Gaskin, you know, Salvon Ahmed thing anymore. And I mean, one of the best running backs in college football sitting right there for him, Brees Hall out of Iowa State. Uh, one of the biggest knocks on Brees Hall is that he's not great in a power running game. So how do you fix that? You may, you do what he does best: one cut zone scheme. I think he would be elite in this mike mcdaniel kyle shanahan offense and it would take some of the pressure off the line take the talent that you already have add bernard raymond to it i if this were to happen i would see Brees hall as an immediate top 12 in the nfl running back that's wow. how good i think he can be and, and i'm not talking about two years from now i'm talking about the first time he steps on the field fantasy uh players you listening uh if you're a fantasy player it's it, it, very high up there the <laughs> right. one thing about Brees hall he doesn't pass block particularly well but I have a fix for that. Just give me just a couple minutes and I'll explain it. In the third round, so you already got Tua. You already got Jalen Waddell. Let's give him another Alabama receiver to play with. John Mechie the third out of Alabama. Six foot, 195. The big concern is the ACL. Well, that's not the only concern. Uh, the thing about John Mechie is that I just never saw him. It, he was always the next great Alabama receiver, but I never saw that. I saw flashes of that. I just never saw it sustained. He's he's fast. I don't think he's as fast as everybody else does. He's obviously not going to run the combine coming off the injury. I think had he done it, he would have been in the mid-4-4s, not at the 4-3 that everybody seems to think he's at. Right. He's just not that fast. That being said, how do you get him acclimated in the NFL? Uh, you give him a quarterback that he's already comfortable with, somebody that he knows. Put him on the other side of Jalen Waddell, somebody that he already knows. Mm-hmm. I do fully believe that John Mechie has untapped potential. Why it didn't come out, I don't know. I, and, and I never I never assume that that's going to come out of a player that came out of the Alabama system because Nick Saban gets the most out of everybody. Slight frame, needs to bulk up. Uh, you know, 100, I, he's listed at 195 pounds. If he's 195 pounds, I'm 300 pounds. He's about a buck 80, maybe even a little slighter than that. Okay. That being said, he is a very good route runner. I think he could be a replacement for Devontae Parker. They shopped him at the trade deadline. They that that relationship seems to have just deteriorated. This would be a replacement for him, and you know Will Fuller. He's he's alive. I, I'm, I'm tired of counting on Will Fuller. <laughs> yeah, I think we all are. Two picks in the fourth round for the Miami Dolphins. One nineteen overall. You got him taking Darian Beavers, linebacker out of Cincinnati. This is a kid that can that, that could play the role that a uh, Kyle Van Noy was meant to play. And I understand that Brian Flores is not there anymore, but they're keeping a lot of the defensive staff intact. That was one of the reasons they hired Mike McDaniel because the defense had kind of turned a corner, 
and they want to keep a lot of these things up. Well, Darian Beavers can be a younger version of that Kyle Van Noy, move them all over the place, get pass rush from the interior, good enough in coverage. The one thing he's got to work on is tackling uh, and because he looks like Tarzan. Uh, the only problem is that he looks like Tarzan, and there's times that he plays like Jane. Mm-hmm. But if you ever, t- if the kid ever becomes a really sound tackler, he could be one of the steals of this draft. How about an edge rusher at 123 overall, Amari Barno out of Virginia Tech? Very raw, very thin. Uh, needs to needs to work on pass rush moves. You know, it, he's good enough against the run, but I think he comes in as a situational pass rusher just because he's so damn athletic. 6'6", six, six, about 240. I think he'll run in the high 4'4s. Four, four Athletic freak of nature. But there's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of substance to his game. This is a perspective play. He was on the Chase Claypool list for me. I think there is a ton of raw talent here that in the right system could be brought out, and that Miami Dolphins system seems to me to be what would bring it out in him. In the fifth round, 157 overall, you got him taking a tight end, I guess a complimentary piece here to Mike Gesicki, McCade Auten out of Washington. Well, this is one of those picks where a lot of people say, well, we already have a tight end. Yeah, but you don't have a Mike McDaniel tight end. Okay, George Kittle is one of the best blockers in this league at the tight end position. You know who's not? Mike Gesicki. Mike Gesicki, I don't really know how McDaniel's going to use him because I've never seen him with a piece like that. Kittle is such a good blocker that he can play three downs. Kate Otten's a great blocker. Mm-hmm. I, I can't physically believe that the kid fell this far. It was one of those that I saw it, and being a Jets fan, I just went, well, fuck. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't want that to happen. Right. But he's a very good intermediate route runner, got very soft hands, good size for the position. The thing about him is he kind of falls into the same area as Gasicki in that he's not a great athlete. It would be a developmental piece, but he's a kid that I think could come in and contribute right away, help in the run game, and be enough of a threat in the passing game that he could complement Mike Gesicki. All right, and to go along with their earlier pick of Brees Hall in the second round, you're giving him another running back here in the sixth round, 198 overall, Max Borgie from Washington State. What do you like about him? You you remember when I said that Brees Hall was not a great pass uh, blocker? Uh huh. I think Max Borgie can be. I think Max Borgie can literally be Austin Eckler. Uh, and, okay. and I understand that's high praise. That's it one is. of the better running backs in the league. He's a better between the tackles runner than Austin Eckler. I'm projecting a lot of other things. If there is a, and this will come into play with another pick that the Dolphins have in just a minute, if there is somebody that can get the most out of him, I would say it's Mike McDaniel. This is a chess piece that you're going to have to teach how to do a lot of things. He's a little bull of a human. He's five. I, they list him at five ten, and I think that's bullshit. There, he's about five eight and a half. Okay, but he plays bigger than that, and I, I do think in that Austin Eckler type role, he will have value. I think he can play in the slot. I think you can do a lot of things with him, and it's a chess piece for Mike McDaniel, who is one of the best in the league at using chess pieces. See Debo Samuel. Yep. In the seventh round at two twenty one overall. Derek King, the quarterback out of Miami. Of course, he's been in college for six years mm-hmm. now and has, I mean, kids had terrible luck with injuries. He has, and I think he has absolutely no future in the NFL as a quarterback. And when I say absolutely no future, I mean absolutely Pat White level no future as a quarterback. So gets drafted in the seventh round, don't even make the team. No. Okay. I think he can play receiver. Oh, okay. I also think he can be a gadget guy. Think about how many different things you saw Debo Samuel do. Mm -hmm. Now, am I sitting here telling you he can be that kind of weapon? No. But we've seen Debo Samuel throw passes. We've seen a lot of things. kind of reminds me of Greg Ward. So when Greg Ward came out of Houston, I did not really see a receiver. I saw an athlete that needed to be taught how to do things. Philadelphia made him into a receiver, and I think Miami could do that with Derrick King. The thing is that he is a good enough passer that you're always going to have to think about that. Could have a future as a return guy. There's a lot of things he could do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's, I feel like he has to get drafted because he's that level of athlete. Does he have a role right now? No. Developmental piece, somebody that you stash on the practice squad and, and hope two or three years down the line he has a role. In his college career, he did rush for 32 touchdowns. So we know he's good with the ball in his hands. Yep. The Miami Dolphins seven round mock draft. There it is. Miami Dolphins. It's a it's a whole new page turning over for the Dolphins this year. We'll see if this class 
can pay off for him if that is the way that it goes. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green, and we'll see you next time.